4 of 2012 version here. I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to link it to you guys over here. Now, I'm not, I've not prepared for this. Okay, you guys are seeing this for the first time. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to pull these three things from the song, show you how I do what I do, okay? Is this it? Okay. My computer's like really slow right now. First thing I pulled from this song, okay? Obviously you don't absorb the entire song all at once. It's a lot, to, a lot of information. But the first thing I pulled from this song was the rhythm. Do you guys hear the beat to this song? I'm gonna play it again. And I'm gonna, this is kind of the beat. went with the guitar part there. <clears throat> so the first thing I pulled was the rhythm. Why, why rhythm first? Is there some kind of magic formula that says rhythm first? No, it was just the thing that was the most obvious to me. It kind of stuck out to me. There's a lot of other stuff going on. And so this was the first thing that kind of stuck out to me. So Now, uh, you guys might be wondering what that is. <laughs> okay, uh, in ethnomusicology, which is what I studied in, in college, it was kind of an exposure to a lot of different types of music in the world. They came up with this cool system to notate rhythm called tubs. Tubs affectionately shortened for a uh, time unit box system. Now, you can imagine uh, each one of these is kind of like a graph paper box, okay? <clears throat> Each one of these boxes is like an equal representation of a unit of time. Okay? <clears throat> this up here. Let's see if they can kind of catch a little bit of it. Okay. And um, this right here, okay, is B1, B2, B3, B4. And in between each of the beats, right, is the up. Okay, so we have some stuff that's on the beat, okay? We have stuff that's in between the beat. Da, 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 da. These are all the ones in between, in between the beat. Okay, you hear that? Now, if I slow it down, the, the song kind of goes... <clears throat> It's not like a clock, but it was kind of the guitar part, okay? This was a man. Yeah? Almost. Almost, almost. <laughs> this guy. He's like, he's like, yeah, no, no, he's, 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 he's a fraud. This guy, get him, get him out of here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you heard that, okay? And you heard that that was one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. And if I slow it down, okay, it's going to be one, two. Well, that 
2, B2 is underlined right here, just to help me show some emphasis. Now, it's, this, was, this system was originally used to uh, notate West African drumming patterns, because you had like six drummers playing different things, and Western notation got really, really sloppy and ridiculous when you, you try to describe music that it wasn't conceived to describe. And so they found this way was a little bit better in terms of notating uh, what was going on in the music. And so the first thing I did was I heard the beat, right? It kind of caught my attention, and then I counted along, and then I understood kind of the patterns that I was hearing, and I put it on there. Now, this right here, guys, this is what happens when people hear a song, and then people play a song. This is the missing link. A lot of times people hear a song, but they can't play the song. A lot of times people can play a song, but they can't really tell another musician kind of what's happening musically in the song. There's a gulf between those two things, hearing and playing, and this is the thing that goes in between. It's the beautiful marriage, the dance of your ear and music theory, okay? You hear it and you describe it, and putting this on the paper makes everything else pretty much done. Okay? Just playing it after that was kind of sort of an automatic thing. Um, now, obviously, there's some steps into that. You know, there was some finger picking and things like that. Um, <clears throat> but do you guys just hear the general gist of the rhythm that, that I kind of pulled from the song? Yeah? No? Yes? Yeah, okay, cool. That's good. Okay, the next thing you might notice was that I pulled the chords from it. Like, I didn't just play the rhythm and it go like this. I didn't snap the whole time. But I pulled the harmony from, from the song, okay? <clears throat> and the harmony, I heard a... So what I heard was this chord going to this chord, going to this chord, going to this chord, and then this chord going to this chord, going to this chord, going to this chord. It's almost the exact same chord progression twice, except for the chord right here is kind of, um, it's the last chord doubled, okay? So I heard this kind of repeating twice. Now, this is not the entire song. I'm sure there's more to it. If you, oh, maybe not. I heard Black that keys, they like to riff, they like to solo on the same stuff over and over again. But, you know, they're great. I'm not, I'm not trying to diminish their musicianship whatsoever. But they're playing a chord, and the first chord that I heard was a minor chord that sounded like home, okay? This is a very big concept in music, home. What sounds like home? I'm going to sing a, sing a melody for you. Uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you... <laughs> Everyone finishes the song because they can't leave it as, like, how I wonder what you... It just doesn't sound finished. When you go home, the song sounds finished. And that home is how we organize everything else in the song in relation to that pitch-wise, okay? People have fancy words for it. They call it do. Some people call it the tonic. Some people say, okay, this is the root of the scale. Or, you know, people have funny words for it. Some of them are very scholarly, and some of them don't mean anything. I just like to call it home. This is home, okay? I heard a chord that was based on the note home. It felt like home. And it wasn't a major chord. It wasn't kind of like that pleasant sounding chord. It was a minor chord. What's the difference between a major chord and a minor chord? Uh, well, a major chord, if you understand the idea of <clears throat> note relationships, it sounds like four half steps and three half steps. Three notes there. Okay. If you don't know, that's fine. You can look it up later. It's not going to be a big quiz at the end of this. Okay. But the minor chord is different. It's three plus four. Okay, it's going to be a little bit different. And so when you have 4 plus 3 and 3 plus 4, there's only one half step difference. But one half step makes a huge world of difference. If you guys have ever heard uh, Dollars and Cents by Radiohead, it goes... It's kind of like, I think it's in this key, right? It's like... You guys 
hear that? His song starts out kind of like maybe pleasant, and then it kind of kind of descends into something. Ooh, like ooh, okay, scary movie time or something. I don't know. But uh, that's the difference of one half step. That's the power of a half step. It's the smallest distance in Western music, but it makes all the difference. And that's the difference that I heard. It was a minor chord. Okay. Now, how did I do that? We can talk a little bit about that at the end, but uh, the next chord I heard was a chord that was a major chord, but a whole step down from home. And that's why it's in capital letters. This is the lowercase, capital, Roman numeral, okay? One and a flat seven. You might ask me, why is there a flat there? Well, because the seven in a major scale is uh, only a half step down. And we need to talk about a chord that's a little farther away, and that's why I put the flat there. But uh, it's, it's okay if it just looks like code to you right now. But to me, it makes sense, and uh, I'll explain how I get there if you guys are interested in knowing. Okay? So the next one is a four chord, which means that we are five half steps away from home the other way. Okay? And then we went back to home. But this time it wasn't A minor. It was a major chord. I heard some kind of shift in the song, and it went... To a major chord, to a major chord, to a major chord. It sounds really nice there. And then it goes back to the kind of, oh, I'm sad and it's cloudy chord, to this chord, back to this one. It's kind of okay again. So that's kind of what I'm hearing there. So, so far we've kind of clear on what happened. I pulled the rhythm. I pulled the harmony, okay? Now, a lot of ear training kind of goes into this, okay? You can already tell it's not something that everybody can do right away. But I'm guessing one of you guys feels that, hey, maybe I kind of understood one of these pretty well, or I have some kind of inclination towards it. And maybe not so much the other one, or maybe I get this one really well on an intuitive level. Yeah, yeah, notes sound like they're far apart, low and high. Timing's a little bit tough for me, but you know what? Everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, my, my weakness is actually rhythm. It's kind of weird. Uh, I, but I think it's because maybe I don't practice enough. But uh, <laughs> everybody has their strengths and weaknesses in, when it comes to music. And the important thing is if you can kind of bring it. Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> Are you here for the workshop? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> here for me. Uh, playing with my heart. Sorry. Okay. I, I uh, better go. Sorry. Oh, hey. Okay, later. Hey, thank you for coming. Uh, I think we'll see each other yeah. in today. Uh, are you coming uh, to start? Yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah. All right, take care. I, I gotta go. No, no problem. So, um, yeah, so the, the chords here, okay, some of these might be easier, some of these might be harder. It's okay. That's kind of naturally part of it. But the point is, once you start to get all three going, and you start to build up your weak spots, you begin to form one really, really strong foundation upon which everything else can reinforce and strengthen. And suddenly you see a connection between this Black Key song and some other song that uses a similar chord progression that maybe you didn't connect before because the theory behind the song will show you the relationships where perhaps you only heard beautiful sounds before. And it's kind of overwhelming. Oh, I love to listen to music. Let me tell you guys, this, I have a passive enjoyment mode of listening to music. But then there's also the active study mode that I get into. And I can kind of switch between them. Uh, but the active study mode is the mode in which you begin to uncover some of the commonalities between artists and stuff like that. Uh, maybe even old stuff versus new stuff from the same artists. Okay? So, interesting stuff so far. Yeah, kind of... Catching, catching up here? Okay, good. Uh, moving along, I mean, or tracking, I guess. Tracking is what I meant to say. You're tracking along. Uh, but yeah, so we have rhythm and we have harmony, okay? And these ideas so suddenly begin to form two-thirds of this big puzzle piece, okay? When you get the third puzzle piece, melody, you can play the entire song. And you can play it and someone, what do I mean by that? Somebody walking down the street who has heard that song before, they're gonna go, you are just, you're playing Black Sheep, what, what is it? Little, little Black Submarines. Little Black Submarines. That, you're playing that, aren't you? And you're like, 
Why, as a matter of fact, I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? You're just like real smug, real arrogant, and proud of yourself. No, no. But it's just an amazing, amazing thing that happens when you learn a piece of music. It's like, I can't tell you what kind of, what sense of wonder kind of comes over you when you're able to play a favorite song for the first time. But I'm sure you guys know what that's like. Yeah, I hear some people, you know, some crazy guys, they, they teach music on YouTube or something. I don't know. Some of you guys... But uh, anyway, <clears throat> you, when you get three pieces of the pie, okay, you get all three chunks moving, okay, what's going to happen is you're going to learn so many songs and see connections between so many songs that all of a sudden this song connects to that song and this melody connects to that melody and these chords connect to those chords, this rhythm connects to those rhythms and these are the same and these are different but they're different this way and this is kind of similar in this way and all of a sudden you form this web of connections that is just so rich and there's like it's like in your brain lights going off and just like electronic electric electric kind of like uh, sparks just happening and then eventually what you do is you get to a point where you can say I understand the ideas musically in this song and that's not easy to do but once you do that you're gonna unleash the musical appreciation you're gonna be able to appreciate music more you're gonna be able to uh, appreciate on this kind of technical level, which is very, very interesting. You can approach it with uh, some kind of confidence that you know what you're talking about. You're going to be kind of uh, able to apply it to your instrument, and then eventually the whole idea is you become fluent in the language of music. Okay? Now, there are many forms of music out there. I don't think music is a completely universal language. There's a lot of different kinds of music out there. But uh, you can become fluent in the music that you like. Okay, if you begin to kind of use some of these concepts, okay? Then, over here, we've got melody. I'm going to listen to the song one more time. This is not cheating. This is not something to be ashamed of. Let's see here. So I just did some numbers again. These numbers, one is still home. Flat three is a note that's three half steps higher. Two is a note that's a whole step higher than one. And flat seven is a note that's a whole step down. Five is a note that's um, <clears throat> five half steps down. And so the idea here is like, I'm again, I'm taking the, the distances that I hear. And through a lot of kind of training and a little bit of just kind of working on my capacity for my ear, where I'm hearing high notes and low notes and the movement between them, I'm able to get some movement kind of described on the page again. So what are, what are all these things? These are just descriptions, musical descriptions of what's happening in the music, right? Um, and so now once I do this, if this is in the key of, I gotta make sure I put this, okay? Harmony, key of A. Also, oh, key of A. So in the key of A, here's A, here's B, here's C sharp, here's B, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. This is a whole step or a whole tone. Tone, tone. semitones or half steps. This is the A major scale. Now when I say flat three, what that means is it's a C. Okay? Because this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now if you're familiar with the video I made on tuning, alternate tunings, I introduced this concept there where I'm basically talking about how I look at new tunings. When I look at new tunings, I'm not thinking of Oh, where do I put
put my fingers. I don't do a G shape or a C shape and just kind of do the things that I'm always supposed to be doing on the standard tuning. But I do, uh, <clears throat> I play the strings first and I listen to the strings and if the strings sound like one of these notes to me, sound like one of them sounds like home to me, I'll just play each string from that point on and try to find a way to create a chord or a melody that works with my note that's home, okay? So that's a very simplified way to, to kind of explain what I'm doing there, but uh, this is the basic concept of that you number each one of these notes. They're degrees, okay? So it's a higher degree or a lower degree. Flat three, flat three, two is C, C, B, and then whoever has the guitar can play along. C, C, B, A, and then we can kind of treat it as a lower G here, which is a flat seven, because I put it down arrow here, kind of goes this way, and then back to A, and then goes all the way down to E, 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 G, E. <clears throat> and so I'm going to do this right now. C, C. So I didn't play a wrong note. I, I was actually quite confident that it was going to sound like the original. I, I wasn't worried about it. Not because I'm really like I'm full of myself or something, but because of this idea that when you have something that you hear and you describe it correctly, and being being wrong and making mistakes is actually part of the process too. You actually, it's really important that you learn from something, right? Mistakes are part of that too. But if I describe this correctly it'll transmit right onto the strings and the frets. Because if I know the strings, and I know the frets are just half steps, all of this becomes just something that I just work out from here. This is the hardest part. Can you guys see that? Now this is the biggest idea. We often, like I said, we do guitar backwards. We always say, hey, what are these strings? What are the frets? Can I use my eyes to kind of see what this person's doing with their fingers? That's so backwards. Music is all about the sound. It's just vibrations through the air. So if we're going to learn how to play the guitar, shouldn't we be listening to the music first? That's like the first step. The guitar is it's not unimportant to play your guitar and practice your guitar and get good and play scales and build virtuosity and dexterity and all that stuff. But it's the last thing. The first thing should be listening. You should get a better ear and you should be able to describe what you're hearing, at least basically, even in a non-musical way. I'm hearing the note go up. I'm hearing the note go down. I'm hearing it stay the same. I'm hearing it kind of go up a lot or a, a little, going down a lot or a little, right? I'm hearing it kind of move up and then down and then up, down, down. You know, I'm hearing stuff and I'm trying to describe it. Now the description is everything. The description is everything here because if you can hear it and then you don't describe it, there's no, uh, there's no transcription that's going to happen. There's no idea that's going to form out of that. If you're just hearing it and experiencing it, that's a wonderful experience. But you're not going to trans transfer that to your instrument, to your musicianship. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So um, this is kind of the basic, basic thing that is happening so far. Okay, so we have the rhythm, the harmony, and the melody. I'm going to show you guys something cool. Okay, show you guys something cool. Uh, if that wasn't cool enough, here, hopefully this will be cool enough. Okay, so um, <clears throat> here we go. Put this back. Hopefully this will be cool enough, guys. When you do this. You combined melody and harmony? I combined melody and harmony. Okay, so you, you totally see what I just did, right? No problem. Okay, now, wait a second. Now, it wasn't, was it perfect? It wasn't perfect, right, the first time, okay? 
But I came with no preparation, okay? The idea is all the preparation I've done has nothing to do with Black Keys. The preparation I've done is a musicianship's, a musician's preparation. My musicianship has been built to the point where I can internalize the harmony and the melody and the rhythm of the song, so much to the point where this is all just flexible to me. I can adapt a song that's on guitar and voice to acoustic guitar only. I can adapt a song that's a piano song to the guitar. I can adapt a guitar song to the piano. I can take a piano song and make it an electronic song because you can program MIDI to play any notes you want. And I could take a choral song and make it an orchestral song. Does that make sense? What's happening is like, it's like on a level that's beyond the guitar. When I have students, I never tell them, hey, I'm going to make you a great guitar player because the truth is I'm not the best guitar player out there. What I can help them do is to become a better musician. Does it make sense? Musician, it's here, okay? Guitarist is a form of musician, but really, musician is where it's at, in my opinion. Listening, understanding, that comes before playing an instrument. Now, obviously, whatever gets you to play your instrument and be into music and stuff, if it's just drumming along, that's great. That's a different entry point than I had. When I was young, the entry point I had into music was listening. And that's why my philosophy is this way. I was in love with the sound of the piano, and that was my entry point. But some people just enjoy the act of making music, very right? kind of like, oh, my hands are doing something and I enjoy the sound that's coming out. That's fine too. Doesn't mean you can't learn from this process. There's a sense in which, okay, no matter what gets you into music, though, nobody gets into it and suddenly becomes a great guitar player overnight, okay? There needs to be some other things that happen along the way. And uh, let me show you some very, very kind of practical tips now. Okay, so for melody, how do you kind of figure out what's going on in the melody? Well, there are three things that you do in order to make the melody. Uh, hey, how's it going? Ciao, ciao. Hey, oh, you're Go. here for the workshop. No, <laughs> no, Sorry. you're not. Okay, another person playing with my heart. No, <laughs> that's okay. So, how do I get a melody? onto the paper? Well, I ask myself three questions. Number one, how is it moving? Up, down, same, and is it a little or a lot. This is a huge, huge part of how you play by ear, play a melody by ear. You hear a note going, twinkle, twinkle. My hand just went from low to high. Well, what's happening, it's moving up, and it's moving up quite a lot, isn't it? But two of the notes were the same, twinkle, same note, mm, 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 mm. Same two notes, it goes here, and then it goes here. Well, that's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, right? wouldn't you say? That's a pretty good uh, description of what's happening. Number two. <clears throat> Have we heard this before? This is crazy. This is a big one. This is another big one, okay? It's a little trick. I'm giving you my secrets. These are like the uh, golden secrets here, okay? So basically what's happening with this question is twinkle, twinkle, little star, I wonder what you are. What about the last two lines did you hear? Those were the last two lines? Or were they the, the first two lines? They're both the same, okay? Now if you were listening carefully, the first two lines of that song and the last two lines of that song are the same, okay? And so that means, that's okay. So that means that if I've heard it before, I save myself all this work. I don't have to like write out all these notes again. And what I do, I just say, hey, that it's just the same as the first two lines. And so this saves you a ton of time. Okay, now you can do that in a big way, like I heard this whole line before, or you can do it in a little way. You can say, da 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 da. What's next? Mm -hmm. One one five five six six. 
I don't know what the next note is, but it's 115566. Mm, oh, I've used that note before. It must be the same note. That's why it's a five single notes or whole lines. You can use this part of the process to help you track down what's happening in the note. You see that? Am I going too fast? No? Okay. So number three. <clears throat> How does the note feel? Okay? Now if you remember, certain notes feel like home. If it doesn't feel like home, it's not a one. If it feels like home, it's a one. Pretty much all I have to say about that, okay? Uh, some notes don't feel like home, but they're kind of close to home. Some notes feel like they're really far away from home. And that's also important. That all helps you narrow down which scale degree it is. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah? Okay. Couple? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. I'm not, not really that good at check, but you, know, you get the point. Uh, I'm glad you guys understand. Okay? So now, this is my process that I do like super lightning quick. Like when you saw me crouching near the computer and doing that with the Black Keys melody, I did these three questions in my head just kind of really fast. So unfortunately you didn't see that happen, it happened internally. But you can look at this and say, ask yourself this question if you're moving a little bit slower and get some of the answers wrong and it's fine. You kind of go through them and fix them. You can always check your answers on the guitar. But you don't start by playing the guitar. When you start by playing the guitar, you start going down this route of like, what are my fingers doing? What are the strings doing? And you say, I want to go here because my fingers always do this. But what if the guy from Black Keys did something that you never did on the guitar? How are you going to figure that out? Okay, that's starting at the wrong place. If you hear what he's doing, you can learn stuff you've never been comfortable playing before. There's this app called Amazing Slow Downer, okay? You can slow music down to 20% of the original speed without changing the pitch. We live in an amazing age for becoming a better musician. Amazing. It's amazing, okay? Um, and so the idea of once you go through this, kind of like think of it as like three questions for homework. It's like a math problem or something, you know? Check your work. Each step is like a proof, okay? This idea of being able to track down what's happening in a melody is suddenly possible when you go through this process. It may not be clean, it may not be perfect, but you go through it and eventually you check your work, you play it on the guitar and you say, you know what, that's right, it's, it sounds right. It actually sounds like the original thing. So, <clears throat> plug this back in. Is it still working? Mm, it's not really charging for some reason. I'm going to plug it into this one real quick. There we go. It's working now. Not charging. Let's try again. Sorry for the delay, guys. Technical dif difficulties. There we go. Charging. All right. So, um, any questions so far? Is this uh, interesting? Is it, is yes, it, is yes. it irrelevant? To, to, okay, music lover here, good. So now, this is basically the same process, okay, as harmony, except in harmony, you multiply what you're doing here, difficulty-wise, by two, three, four. Because how many notes are in a chord? Sometimes two, three, four notes in a chord, sometimes even five or six notes in a chord. It gets really complex. but. My choir upbringing helped me out here, okay? So if I sing four parts, and I go from this chord to this other chord, and every, everybody's moving kind of this way, guitar does a similar thing. It has six voices. You can pretend each string is a voice. And some voices are going up, some voices are going down, some voices are doing the same thing, some voices are not doing anything. That's a muted string, right? Okay? So what you get is a sense of, voices moving, if you can track the highest voice moving, which is always the easiest, track, uh, easiest one to track, you can see that it's going down or it's going up. This idea that all of a sudden, I can kind of hear what he's doing on that string. Whoa, what if you did that with the lowest string next? And then you kind of work from the outside in, highest, lowest string, these are hard to hear. You can slow it down, use your app or whatever, find a teacher and kind of slow it, tell them to play it slower for you. 
and then you kind of do this, okay, until you get to the middle notes, and then all of a sudden you have all six strings of the chord, okay? Easier said than done, but it's the same concept as this, except <clears throat> how is this note moving? How is that note moving? How is that note moving? And then, if that still doesn't make sense, okay, it's have you heard this before? I think I've heard this chord before, or no, we haven't heard it before, so it's something else. And then lastly, how does the note feel? How does the note or chord in this case? Man, they're playing some good post rock outside. Uh, okay, so how does the note or chord feel? The chord feels like home, or the chord feels nasty. It feels strange, or it feels really sweet and pleasant, or it feels kind of smooth and jazzy, or it feels kind of dark. 